Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today, I have the great pleasure to spend some time with Brendan of Slave Machine. And we are surrounded by a bunch of Nakamuras, a bunch of Robo Drills, and we're going to learn a little bit more about Brendan's success and some of the stories about the projects he's been able to create that are a little bit unique to some of the other Nakamura projects that we've seen and heard about. So, Brendan, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. Sure. Well, thank you. And we started with Nakamura, my God, it was in the early 90s when we bought our first Nakamura, and uh, since then we bought about 30 of them. And most of the ones that we have are, are the three turret versions. Uh, we do have some single turrets, some dual turrets, but I just like the three turret machines because basically they're able to hold more tools. And I can do a lot of different parts on them that I couldn't do on single or dual turret machines. Wow, so we're talking over two decades of investing in Nakamura's. That's, that's kind of a testimonial in itself to go, you know what? I liked it 25 years ago. I'm gonna keep buying more and more. And we're talking around 30 now. Well, I like Nakamura. Nakamura is a family-owned company. They're, they're ran by great guys. They're represented in the States by great companies, you know, as Method. And uh, Method has always served us, serviced us well. And Nakamura has done the same thing. I mean, uh, I, I know the owners of the company. They take our suggestions. They're, uh, they're just good guys. They, they, they understand what guys like us want. And they oftentimes ask us, hey, how can we make our machines better? And they, you know, they don't listen to every, every idea, but they... Uh, it's a family-owned business, and they do a great job. The machines are obviously good enough for our, I'd never buy a different type of, uh, you know, brand of a multi-axis. Well, give it another 10 years, they might listen and start listening to all your ideas and not just some of the ideas. But you mentioned that most of your Nakamura's have three turrets on them, right? Yeah. And you're able to create some really cool products and projects with this type of machine, which I believe you have one sitting beside of us right now. Would you just kind of describe yeah the process of how you went about making this part on this Nakamura? Right. Take for example this part. This part is best made from a forging. You can make it from a rectangular bar or a round bar, but why would you want to in any significant volume? So you, but you take a forging like this, and everybody else would look at this part and say it's a milling part, right? You put it on a vertical or a horizontal or you know whatever, but we, we get a forging, and the first thing we do is we knock a hole right through the center of it, right? Once we have the hole through the center of it, and, and we don't have it set up on this machine, this is just an example, but we put an arbor on the main spindle of the machine and we grip on the hole about halfway through the hole. And then we could have two Y-axis turrets go to work machining the pockets, one obviously here and one here at the same time. And then, I mean obviously there's a lot more geometry on this part, but bottom line is I could have this machine operating with two Y-axis turrets on the main spindle. Then I could transfer the part on the other arbor bring it over to the sub-spindle, and I could have the other three turret, third turret, I should say, go to work on it on the, on the sub. And then I could float the lower turret back and forth. So in short, this machine, for this particular application, can be basically a three turret milling machine. I mean, actually, the spindle doesn't even turn on this. All it does is turn to position. So, in effect, I'm putting three tools on the part at once. Now again, a lot of people would say, well, I could do this on three, three verticals, or three horizontals, or three, you know, whatever, three robo drills. I have about 30 robo drills as well. Yes, that would, from a machining standpoint, be a cheaper way to go, because the robo, three robo drills are obviously a lot cheaper than this machine. But then you have to take the part from fixture to fixture. There's stack up issues, there's problems, there's loading. In the end, what you could have by doing this part in one operation on a three turret milling machine, is you have all your features locked in. You have perfect quality, and once your process is established, it's a lot better than doing it in three separate work holdings. So, again, that's just one application of having a machine like that that has three turrets and three Y axes. It's way better for a part like this. Now, again, run 20 million of these set. You might be better off having robots individually load robo drills. But for mid range volumes of 1,000 to 10,000, this is, uh, in my mind, a preferable way. I think it's a creative way. And you've, in essence, turned a turning machine into a milling machine, reducing three machines down to one machine. And you had mentioned something to me before, which I think is somewhat significant, is don't think about the cost of the machine when you're, when you're talking about a process like this. It's going to pay for itself. Think about how you're going to get that part done. And that's what you did here. Right. That's, that's, 
I mean, we're pretty lucky and fortunate and blessed to have a lot of different machines at our disposal. We have horizontals and verticals and multi-axis and two turrets and three turrets, four turret machines. Sometimes if I have a long drill in here where even though I have a four turret machine and I can put the four turret on the, uh, to work, I, I need the Z-axis travel of the lower turret. So I have to put it on a three turret. So you're right. We don't, I, I don't look at it as far as how, how about labor having to do with the machine. I look, I fit the part to the machine. So in other words, if that's a three, more of a three turret machine, I'll find a three turret machine available to run. If this is more of a two turret machine or a three turret machine is gross overkill, I'll go to a third, two turret machine. Same with a four turret machine or any other machine for that matter. So yes, I try to make the part to, I try to fit the machine to the part with respect to labor. I just want to minimize my labor. That's why if you'll notice, all of our machines are face to face. So that once a process is established, a guy can run multiple machines. That's how we lower our, our labor. Input. Because well, obviously that's the biggest point of anything is reducing the labor input. Because if you want to compete globally, you know, the United States got high labor rates. Right, in comparison to a lot of other countries. Bottom line is this is a way for us to reduce the labor. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, to coin a phrase from some of my friends over at Martin Trunyon, stop handling, start machining. The ability to reduce from three machines down to one machine, multiple facets, as in, I don't need multiple people to run multiple machines. I can have one person, as you said, they're face to face. I don't have to worry about maybe some of my setup and offsets being messed up because I have to switch from machine to machine. It's all, all right. being done in one place and even just change over time. Sometimes that's the delay. So in my opinion, you did that the right way, even if you were running 20,000 parts or 50,000 parts. It's funny, the reason why I bought these machines to start over with, or to start with, I should say, is I just bought them for two holders. You know what, years ago when I got these, I was just enamored with the fact that, you know what, if all my drills were down here and I put drill one here, drill two here, drill three, drill, I never had to undo any of these screws. And that's the longest part of anything is the setup, right? So say I wanted to use a half inch drill or a three quarter inch drill or a one inch drill, it's, it was there. I didn't even consider the live tool aspects. I, I was so, so happy to have basically a tool magazine from which I could pull up and start running any jobs without having to constantly lock down my tools, move my coolant lines, blah, blah, blah. It was a setup reducing element. And then, after running multi-axis for a couple of years, you know, we started buying live tool, holes, not, oh, tool holders, and now I think we have, uh, we have thousands of them. You know, and again, it's just, multi-axis is just a way of life for us. And a friend of mine recently told me, to your point, no one's ever complained about having too many tool positions or too many tools. It's always when you don't have enough. Right, that's exactly <laughs> it. And, and Nakamura's machines, most of which have half indexes. So if you want to get really creative, some of these tools can be, this one doesn't have any, any of them on there, but bottom line is, is you can do half indexes. So you know, a machine with you know, three 12 position turrets can double. Now again, you have clearance issues and you know, whatever, but bottom line is it's, it's an incredibly efficient, complex, capable machine, more so than any machine I've ever seen. Well, knowing that you are a third generation as slave and you guys have been doing this for a long time, your wisdom is easily seen and received by a person like me. So thank you for sharing that wisdom. Sure. And now you've inspired me to maybe, you know, come put in my resume here because it looks like some exciting stuff. You wouldn't happen to be hiring, would you? Absolutely, we're hiring. We'll <laughs> hire, we, we need, we need hundreds of machinists. We'll take, I mean, we've we probably hired 50 people in the past year, and it, you know what, it's, it's you know, we consider ourselves to be an industry leader in multi-axis technology. You know, the thing is, it's difficult for our, our, our green machinists, or even a new machinist, to, to get used to stuff like this, because there's so much going on in here. You know, a lot of guys are used to, oh, I just want to drill, I just want to tap, I just want to do this and do that. But this is an incredible opportunity, because the software available in these machines is amazing. And, and you know, all, all kids are good on software stuff coming up in video game culture, but you know, they, you can learn a lot. And, and again, with one controller on these machines, they could produce a, basically a part complete. So yeah, I mean, I, I, you, want, you want to drop that mic and swing on in here, we'll teach you all kinds of stuff. Done. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, you mentioned the word wisdom, right? It's different than knowledge, right? Wisdom is, is, is defined by, by basically screwing things up enough times so you, you learn from your mistakes. And, 
you know what, we've done that here. I mean, you know, for years and years and years, we've made mistakes in machining, and eventually we've evolved to the point of knowing what we want by making those mistakes. So our wisdom says that if a part is capable of be being made from bar stock or from a loaded and foraging or casting on a multi-axis, that is the way to go. You know, because it's just, it's just an easier, it's a more robust process. It's, it just yields better results, I think. Absolutely agree. Cannot say it better myself. On that note, we have to end this because there's nothing more insightful that I could add to this conversation. So, okay. Brendan, thank you so much for sharing your story with MTD Global and MTD North America. Thank you for representing the amazing people at Methods Machine Tools. I know they appreciate what you do, and I know you appreciate them as well with their service and support.